And I'm Mariana. Welcome to The Transcript. This week, The Transcript covers recent sexual harassment allegations, goes swimming and diving with Hamped Up, and looks at upcoming changes in internet regulation. On Wednesday, President Trump formally recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, marking a shift in decades of U.S. foreign policy. The U.S. Embassy, which is presently located in Tel Aviv, will be relocated to Jerusalem over the next six months. The announcement could derail fragile regional peace talks, as sites in the city are considered holy to both Islam and Judaism, and Palestinians consider East Jerusalem the capital of a future Palestinian state. Just before 2 a.m. last Saturday morning, the U.S. Senate passed its version of a tax reform bill with a vote of 51 to 49, with Republican Senator Bob Corker voting against the bill with the Democratic senators. Democrats criticized Republicans for not giving members enough time to read the amended bill, which included handwritten amendments. The House of Representatives passed its version of the tax bill in November, and the two chambers will now head to conference to reconcile both versions of the bill. Thousands have evacuated the areas around Ventura County and Los Angeles this week as wildfires spread in California. The fires have burned over 83,000 acres, and as of Wednesday, the blaze was only 5% contained. Over 150 structures have been destroyed, and an estimated 12,000 are under threat. Hi, I'm Flor Castillo. And I'm Uta Penes. And this is Tell It Like It Is. This week we are discussing recent sexual harassment allegations in Hollywood media and political circles. Recently, Time Magazine named the Silence Breakers their Person of the Year, people responsible for telling their stories of sexual harassment in the past year. For the past few months, powerful and well-known American media and political influencers have been accused of sexual assault. People such as Bill Cosby, Kevin Spacey, Senator Al Franken, Bill O'Reilly, Harvey Weinstein, Matt Lauer, and many others have been accused. Matt Lauer, who was the host for the Today Show since 1977, was fired last week over sexual misconduct allegations. But Lauer isn't the only person who has lost their career over sexual misconduct. Many have been fired or have resigned from their jobs. With many victims of sexual assault standing up to these powerful figures and making their story known, Many question if these growing accusations will have a long-term effect. Will it change for the victim of sexual assault, or will it impact in the long-term future? We sit down with the Feminist Collective advisor, Rachel Stavely-Hill, to talk about how the sexual harassment discussion has increased since the last couple of years, and how the Feminist Collective is addressing this issue. I don't think that there's more sexual harassment. Um, I think that sexual harassment has always been a problem. Um, and I think that we just suddenly seem to have reached a tipping point where now we can talk about it more um, and where there are actually consequences for people who are harassers. I'm not entirely sure what it is that's different now that suddenly people are feeling more comfortable coming out and talking about having been victims of sexual harassment. Um, I'm not sure what's shifted culturally that now we're starting to believe that this is a real problem that needs to be addressed. The first piece is, is identifying, yes, this is a problem, and um, making sure that there are systems in place for people to report if they have been victims of harassment. I think we need to create safe spaces where people can talk about having been victims of harassment or assault. In planning for Social Justice Week this year, the Feminist Collective is working on a project um, where we're asking students to share with us incidents of sexual harassment that they've faced as a way of personalizing it so that we can see how it actually impacts, you know, not just people in the world, but people here at Northampton High School. As more allegations come to the surface, this country will inevitably have to grapple with the important issue and how this year of the silent breaking will impact American media, culture, and politics. I'm Oda Benes. And I'm Flor Castillo. And, and this, this was, was Tell It, it like, like It Is. Hi, I'm Gabe Nicotera. Welcome to Hamped Up Kayak Edition. Gabe, it's swimming and diving this week. Swimming and diving edition. Y'all ready for this? Swimming and diving, two sports unsuitable for those who cannot swim, has just begun practicing for their winter season. O.J. Simpson once said, I did not have anything to do with these murders, ever. This week, I sat down with senior Quinn Norton Smith about his last year being on the swim team. So this is your 10th year swimming, so what do you plan on doing with swimming in the future? I definitely plan on swimming in college. 
hopefully at Yale. I don't want to jinx anything, but um, definitely in college and probably outside of college after. So it's the very beginning of your last season swimming for the high school. So what are your goals for the end of the year? Uh, so I'm looking to swim pretty fast this year. Uh, hopefully I'll get a state's title in the 50 free. Um, and most of all, just getting the rest of my team to swim fast. <laughs> Great. Thanks so much for being on Hamped Up. Anytime. I also sit up with junior Jordan Vandergriff about her love and fear for diving, America's most precious aquatic sport. All right, so I'm here with Jordan Vandergriff, and I think the question everybody's literally been dying to ask you is, as, as you're approaching a difficult dive being viewed by tens of people, what goes through your mind as you're sending a dive? Typically just what I have to do. You really can't think about everyone else that's watching you. You just have to think about the individual parts of a dive. That's about it. Can you talk a little bit about the diving team's strengths and weaknesses? Definitely one of our strengths is our coaches, Louie and Joel Brewer. They are great, and I've known them for a super long time, so it's great to be able to work with them again this season. Um, one of our weaknesses is definitely not having enough people. If any boys or girls want to join diving, you totally should. We have a great time. We practice every day during the week. When I say diving, what would you say? Let's do it. I'm going to be teaching Gabe three dives. The first one's going to be a front twister, which is going to be one flip with one twist. The second one is going to be a front double, which is two front flips in a row. And then the last one is going to be a back twister, which is you're going to do one back flip and one and a half twists. Wish me luck. Thanks, guys. The swimming and diving team has their first meet today at Central High School at 4 o'clock. The girls basketball team has their first game at the Cage in Amherst at 6 o'clock, and the boys have their first game following at 7.30. Their spirit is blackout. Thanks for watching Hamped Up. I'm Gabe Nicotera. In the past few weeks, if you happen to open a newspaper, turn on a news station, or even scroll through social media, you may have noticed the term net neutrality popping up everywhere. Net neutrality started hitting the front pages on November 21st, when the Federal Communications Commission announced its plan to repeal net neutrality. In order to even begin to dive into what this might mean, I first needed a simple working definition of net neutrality. So I sat down with Stefan Ward-Wheaton from Free Press, an organization based in Northampton that has worked on issues of media access and internet regulations for the past 14 years. Net neutrality is a principle that you should be able to, as an internet user, visit and access any site or any service on the internet on an even playing field. In 2015, the big victory that we got was to get uh, the internet and internet communication and commerce classified under something called Title II. It ensured that ISPs, internet service providers like Verizon, AT&T, they have to provide you with um, a data rate and with internet access um, across the board. You pay one price and you get the whole internet, essentially. That's what's under threat if these rules get rolled back. Federal policy on internet regulations can change every few years with the appointment of a new chairman of the Federal Communications Commission, who is appointed by the president. To learn a bit more, I called up former chairman of the FCC, Tom Wheeler, who was responsible for passing net neutrality in 2015. When Chairman Pai was a commissioner when I was chairman, he opposed uh, everything that I did uh, on the open internet. And when uh, he became chairman, he announced he was going to take a weed whacker, that was his term, take a weed whacker to uh, the policy and um, I just think he's following through on his commitment to do so. The FCC will vote on whether or not to repeal net neutrality on December 14th. It is likely to pass the Republican majority FCC, and it is in line with the deregulatory efforts by President Donald Trump. Experts say that this could have a significant impact on Americans' everyday experience of the internet. You could see essentially um, a, a scenario where you have, you have, um, you have to pay higher and higher tiers of pricing to access more and more of the internet or to access Facebook 
um, Instagram, Snapchat, other social media sites. Although my interview requests to Verizon, Comcast, Charter, and AT&T were denied, I was sent statements applauding the move to repeal net neutrality regulations on the basis that removing the regulations will increase innovation and claiming a commitment to not blocking or discriminating against content. I understand what they put out for PR purposes, but it's interesting what their actions and then what they told the court suggest about really what's going to happen. How do you start up a new innovative company? If Comcast, for instance, says to the company you're competing against, well, I'll tell you what, if you'll pay us some extra money, we'll prioritize your service, and this new startup won't be able to, uh, to have as good a service. Even if the net neutrality regulations are repealed, Free Press says that their fight will not end. We're fighting right now to get Congress to take action on the issue. We have a strategy in the courts that we can uh, contest and appeal this decision because it affects literally everyone who's ever used the internet, though they may not know it. I'm Elena Fragamini. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Emily and I will be performing along with other NHS students in Pioneer Valley Ballet's The Nutcracker this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at the Academy of Music. Tickets are online and at the Academy Music box office. Stay tuned for previews of this week's online extras. When it comes to crunch time, I perform at a level beyond the rest. I, I clutch up, so to, say, so to speak. So basically, there were um, a bunch of Jews and they were the Maccabees. Roman Emperor came to power. He um, decrees that Judaism is not allowed.